We catch basically three million pounds uh, every year, somewhere in that area. And it seems to be a pretty much a renewable resource. The season basically starts for us October 5th. We have 10 days grace to put our traps overboard so we can harvest on the 15th. That gives us time for our bait to work in the traps for the crabs to get in it. As of October 15th, we can harvest until May 15th. Then we have a 10 days grace period to get our traps. If we had a breakdown or some problem, we couldn't get all our gear in, you have to let the crabs go after the 15th of May. Anyone that really knows anything, tells you there's a lot about them we don't know. The things we know is, is kind of how to catch them. Some we have better years than others, and I think a lot of it has to do with salinity and how much weather we get. A couple things happen. When it gets really cold, the crabs start moving really slow. So they move off the hard rock and they move to the sand. And we know that because, because we, we put our traps all over and we, we know where they catch. Octopus are one of their basic major enemies. They're kind of on the, base, the bottom of the food chain. Everything eats crabs. Whenever the bad weather comes, it brings up the silt. Silt comes up and the silt covers up all the bivalves. Anything that, that filter feeds or conks or whatever, they bury up in the sand during the day most of the time. They're nocturnal, they come out at night. But when the silt gets really thick, they have to come out to breathe. So they can actually get up, come up to the surface. All of their, their, their common predators for stone crabs can't see them, of course. They have that blanket of cover of silt. They're out there, out of their little hole they dig, and they're grabbing all these, these shells and stuff and dragging it back to their hole. Well, we know this, so we bait right in front of weather, during weather, and right after weather. And it, it, the catch is much better. Crabs are basically the scargo eaters. They eat clams, white arcs, conks, whelks, coquinas, but they're opportunistic too. They will eat dead fish or, or anything to get a hold of that, that's protein. We also know that crabs that on the moon, they molt, so we get what do we call a light. That's a crab that's, or a floater. That's a crab that's not quite full of meat, and the, the, the shell is very thin, and it's, not, it's rejected at the, at the processor. We reject them back to the, to the to fishermen, which they sell sometimes. Sometimes you're on the side of the road and you see crabs for sale. Well, a lot of times they're the rejects. They're not the ones that you really want. We have a biodegradable escape panel on all of our traps. That's a wooden panel that's screwed into the plastic trap. It's all on the plastic now. Very few wood traps left. What that does is, is once that, the boar worms eat that, boar, that piece of slat out, the trap just becomes habitat. It's no longer a trap. It's just down there, stuff grows on it, things live in it, juveniles get in there and hang out. It's not a bad thing. It's just kind of a little small artificial reef on the bottom. Uh, we try and try and, uh, and watch our resources as best we can. We're uh, good about not taking egg-bearing females. We put them back by law. You're supposed to, and most fishermen do. I mean, we got a few that don't, but most do. We're kind of toying with the idea maybe to shorten the season so those egg-bearing females aren't at risk. The way the, the way the industry, with the claws, the, the limit size limit limits you many times to one claw. And not taking egg bearing females is very important because, again, that's just something you don't want to do. I, uh, I think that the resource is in very good shape. They're not showing effects of overfishing at all. 